welcome cards. Drop that in the offering plate as it comes by. That way we'll have a record of your visit. If you're a member that has any information that needs to be changed, fill one of these out, drop it in there, and we can get that info changed in our databases. I think that's everything. <laughs> Let's go to Lord in prayer this morning. <clears throat> Father, it is so good to be in your house this morning, God, amongst your people. God, we thank you for the privilege it is to worship you. We thank you for this house that you've given to us to come together and to worship you in. God, we thank you for the freedom that we have. We thank you for those who have fought and died for that freedom. God, as we enter this worship this morning, God, I just pray, Lord, that, that you would be the center of our attention, that you would be the focus of our hearts this morning. God, let, us, let our hearts not be turned to anything else except for our desire to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand, turn around and shake somebody's hand, and welcome to, to church this morning. All right, everybody, this is going to be a hymnal Sunday, so I need for you to grab your hymnals, grab your hymnals, and we're going to start with page 27 in your Baptist hymnal, page 27 in your Baptist hymnal, 27. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, hallelujah. verse of page 27 thou rushing wind that art so strong ye clouds that sail in heaven along oh praise him hallelujah the rising moon in the lights of evening find a voice oh praise him oh praise him Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And all ye men of tender heart, forgiving others, take your part. Oh, sing ye, hallelujah, ye who long pain and sorrow bear. your care oh praise him oh praise him hallelujah 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 let all things their creator bless and worship him in humbleness oh praise him Oh, praise him, oh, praise him, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, praise him all creatures here below, oh, praise him. heavenly host praise father son and holy ghost oh praise him oh praise him hallelujah 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 
62, page 62. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divine is comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers each winding path I tread. Gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter, and my soul a thirst may be, God sheen from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. God sheen from the rock before me. Spring of joy I see All the way my Savior leads me All the fullness of His love Perfect rest to me is promised In my Father's house above Spirit clothed immortal Wings His flight realms of day this my song through endless ages Jesus led me all the way this my song through endless ages Jesus led me all the way turn please to page 187 I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God discloses And He walks with me talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we travel there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever 
I'd stay in the garden with him Though the night around me be falling But he bids me go Through his voice of woe His voice to me is calling And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known none other has ever known you may be seated but we're going to continue singing not in your hymnal but some songs that I think you'll recognize the chorus so I hope you will continue singing with me uh, as we also give through our tithes and offerings the words to this are Jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Sing it with me. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. I thank God for the mountains thank him for the valley I thank him for the storms he's brought me through for if I had never had a problem I wouldn't know that God could solve them I wouldn't know what trust in God could do through it all through it all through I've learned to trust. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Let's sing that one again. Through it all, through it all, through it all, I've learned trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God through it all through it all I've learned to depend upon his word because Jesus is the answer because Jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other Jesus is the way, Jesus is the answer for the world today, above him there's no other, Jesus is the way. Great singing, thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. And good morning. Uh, got a few things to share with you this morning as we go into a time of meditation and prayer. Uh, first of all, happy 61st anniversary to Roy and Betty Connor. <laughs> you got to be careful what you say in Sunday school. The pastor may repeat it. 
Also, uh, I, I believe my daughter is, it, well, she's visiting from Dallas, Texas, Sierra Wheatley, Wheatley, but she is in the 11th, will be coming to the 11 o'clock service. Continue to remember in prayer, Irma Fretwell, as she uh, uh, continues to deal with, uh, well, deep into the stages of cancer, uh, and her daughter as well, that is, is working is, and looking over her and spending, well, I've spent well over a year uh, with her. Uh, there's no one in the hospital right now. Continue to remember Danny and Phyllis Michaud. Kenny Page had uh, surgery on his shoulder this week, and, uh, and he is uh, recuperating f- uh, from that well. Continue to lift him up in prayer. Remember our, our homebound members, uh, our deacon election, and also our, our nation has some decisions to make here in the next couple of weeks, and we need to lift our nation up as well. We'll go into a time of meditation. Then I'll lead us in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, We come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Scripture speaks about Jesus Christ being the rock that we can stand on. And Father, there's no greater time that we need a firm foundation than when we face adversity. Father, whether we're in times of celebration or in deep concern, We're in a time of relative peace. We always must put our feet firmly on that foundation. And Father, as we intercede for those in our church that are struggling physically, so many that are struggling mentally and spiritually, and for our nation, how we lift up our nation as it looks towards choices that will affect individuals, and literally people all over the world. Father, in all things, we submit ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And now, Father, as we open up the eternal Word of God, speak to us through the power of your Holy Spirit, not through the agencies of man, but through the power of your touch. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Encourage you to open up your Bibles to 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter. Don't worry, we're not going to read the whole chapter, but I will be speaking in reference to that. That's in page, let's see, 256 in your pew Bible. Now, this morning we're looking at a leader who was his worst enemy. His worst enemy. And and he was a, a man of, of, of tremendous abilities and talents. And most importantly, he was chosen by God. But as he took his eyes off of God and followed the ways of the world, he, became, he, he began a slow spiral downward and lost everything that was important to him. We're talking about leadership this morning, and, and instead of saying, talking about how to succeed in leadership, we're warning you about failure in leadership. Now, I, I have to tell you, I'm one of the few people that loves King Saul. I love reading about him. He is a tragic, tragic figure about a guy that, that, that tried to do well, but lost the bearings in his life. Now, let me, let me kind of catch you up to where we're, we're at in this story. Now, now, King Saul, he came from an age when, when God had warned the people of Israel who had been begging for a king, and here's the catch word, to be like all the other nations, to, be a, to have a king. And so he raised up a man out of obscurity, led him by his spirit. The man fa- had tremendous, tremendous victories over some of the most disorganized people that were in that region. But through the hand of God, they were able to see success. But here's the problem. He had an obedience 
problem. And we see in the 15th chapter that while they were fighting the Amalekites, that's a group of raiding people that had been raiding the Israelites for hundreds of years, when he fought them in a decisive battle, God had told him to basically, I mean, kill everybody. It was one of those type of situations. I mean, down to the livestock. God gave them victory, and instead of following God's leadership, he abided by the customs of the time. He spared the king, spared the king, and also, I mean, why kill the livestock? I mean, that's, that's the spoils of war. That's, that's, that's your reward. That's how you reward your people for a victory. And because of that disobedience through the prophet Samuel, God gave his kingdom to another. Now, here's the thing that you need to keep in mind. There's a way that the world leads in leadership. And then there's the calling that God places upon our lives. Proverbs 14, 12 says this, there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Saul is headed down a path to death and loss of everything he holds dear. Now, here's here's where our our story begins. We're in the 18th chapter. Shortly after the time of, of of David's victory over Goliath. And, and David finds favor in Saul's eyes. Now, now, David had already been anointed as the king of Israel to come. Folks, this is going to take a long time before this ever comes into fruition. But he's brought into Saul's court, and he finds favor, favor but instead of as, as he finds victory in defeating Saul's enemies, Saul begins to be highly suspicious of David. Let's read verse 5 through 9 to kind of give you a perspective on that. David marched out with the army and was successful in everything Saul sent him to do. Saul put him in command of the soldiers, which pleased all the people and Saul's servants as well. As David was returning from killing the Philistine, the women came out from all the cities of David, of Israel, to meet King Saul, singing and dancing with tambourines, with shouts of joy, and three stringed instruments. As they celebrated, the women sang, Saul has killed his thousands, but David killed his tens of thousands. Saul was furious and resented this song. They credited tens of thousands to David, he complained, but they only credited me with thousands. What more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul watched David jealously from that day forward. And so, Saul is becoming even more successful with David, but David is highly successful in bringing down Saul's enemy. Now, did you hear what I said? David is highly successful in bringing down Saul's enemies. Listen, (laughs) this is where Saul starts to really lose it. Instead of seeing David as a blessing, he sees him as a threat. Those of you that are in leadership, listen, you don't have to be the best at everything that you do. If if God gives you a subordinate that shines, that that is able to, to be successful in adding value to what you're responsible for, the worst thing that you can do is to resent the success of that subordinate. Many times, and perhaps you've seen this too, I've seen leaders sabotage the success of somebody that was successful for that leadership. Folks, when you do that, you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. And what does this say about Saul's character? Here's a man that saw great success with or without David, the greatest military leader since Joshua, and yet he's insecure in who he is. And the insecurity that he has in his life, instead of putting his his confidence in God 
and celebrating what God had done through him, he's looking over his shoulder. And we're going to see that what was precious to him, he's going to destroy in trying to secure what's what's precious to him. Let's take a look at verse 10 through 12. The next day an evil spirit from God took control of Saul, and he began to rave inside the palace. David was playing the harp as usual, but Saul was holding a spear, and he threw it, thinking, I'll pin David to the wall. But David got away from him. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with David, but had left Saul. Now, something, something that's kind of controversial in this passage is it talks about an evil spirit sent from God took control of Saul. And there's a lot that I could say on this, but let me just say this, that God is in control. God is, has dominion over all things. What you need to be concerned about is not so much that evil spirit, but you need to be concerned about and keep your eye on the fact that the Spirit of the Lord left Saul and went to David. Here is the other key to Saul's favor. I mean, to Saul's failure is the Spirit of the Lord left him. Now, here's one of these things that you can debate with yourself. When the Spirit of the Lord leaves us, and I'm not talking about losing your salvation, but, but the blessing of the Lord leaves our life, did God leave or did we move? Listen, God is constant. God, his, 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 what he says is right, what he says is wrong, what he says is reality, what he says is false, stays a constant it always has, it always will. And so if, if you feel a drifting from God, God did not drift from you. You were the one that had moved. We saw that happen several chapters ago in Saul's life when he took on the beliefs and, and the, 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 well, the, how you did things from how the pagan kings did and forgot the one who had brought him to his success. If God has placed you in a position of leadership, and it may be in your business, it may be at work, your family, your community, if God has placed you in a position of leadership, folks, don't forget the one that brung you. If God has placed you by his blessing, by his by his sovereignty, then remember the one that brought you there. Do not, do not sacrifice what God's principles in your life for, the, for what, what seems to be what everybody else's, else does. Folks, that's the way to lead to failure. Now, here's, here's four things that Saul, uh, that Saul lost that were precious to him as a leader. First, the thing he lost is his, his sanity. We've already seen in verse 10 that an evil spirit was tormenting Saul. And you see it in three other places. There's a number of mental breakdowns and foolish judgments in the life of Saul as you continue to read his story. He also had times of repentance and remorse. One of the things that people overlook is, is that Saul, Saul really was a very spiritual man at different times of his life. But when the Spirit of God left him, when God's favor left him, he lost his North Star. Listen, when you lose your North Star, your direction, Somebody is going to give you direction. You may think you're independent, but surely enough, when people that think they're independent are the ones that are most dependent on false direction and beliefs. And it went away, went in direction into paranoia and flat out foolishness that ended, wreck, that ended up wrecking his sanity. How to fail as a leader? Well, become your own worst enemy. 
Become your own worst enemy. Become insecure as you race to cover your insecurities with foolish power strategies and games that are not of the Lord. And even if you do find some success in those foolish power strategies, you're still going to find a hollow victory. How to overcome failure as a leader? God's standard for our lives gives us parameters to work in. That builds confidence. Having parameters in your life brings security into your life. I know, I know, I know that we don't, we don't like to be hemmed in. Rules, parameters, directions sometimes get in the way of what we want to do. But when they come from God, they are for your blessing, not for your restriction. Folks, we find confidence and freedom within the parameters that God brings into our lives. The next one, he loses his family. At the beginning of of the chapter, you see Saul's oldest son, the guy that's going to inherit the dynasty, Jonathan, become best friends, close, intimate friends with David. And later, you're going to see as a trap to David, he marries off his daughter, Michal, to David, and she ends up favoring David over her father. Eventually, This is going to cause a rift, a civil war within Saul's own family. Now, why is he doing all this? Why, to to preserve his dynasty. What's ending up happening? He's destroying his dynasty. That is the foolishness of what happens when we follow God's follow the world's direction instead of God's direction, is we end up destroying the things that we hold precious and that we want to preserve. How to fail as a leader? Risk your family while pursuing worldly success. How to overcome failure? Christ followers are always in the process always in the process of laying their pride, laying their worldly successes at the feet of Jesus Christ. We are always in process of seeking God's will over our own. And when you do that, when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all the other things line up. And listen to me as I say this. There's a lot of people, you may think you're, you're invaluable as a leader. There's a lot of people that can take your place in leadership. No one can take your place as the father or mother or grandparent in your family. The next area that he failed is his kingdom. Now, if you read further into 1 Samuel, you'll see that that we go 13 more chapters of this insanity that Saul has most of the time chasing after David. And I look at that and say, first of all, man, how great it would have been if he kept David on his side. He could have totally vanquished the Philistines and probably got the attention of the Egyptians. He would have become the world power that later David and and Solomon would become. But he can't do that because he's chasing after David. He's dividing his kingdom. Uh, uh, For people that that instead of saying, yes, we, we, we love the unified efforts of Saul and David, he's making people choose between them. And eventually, he will murder people in his own kingdom while, while looking out for David and the people that are supported for him. He ends up destroying and fracturing his kingdom while trying to preserve it. He just, just like his family, he destroys it while trying to save it. For, folks, this is surely the mark of an insane person. How to fail as a leader? Well, listen, you want to fail as a leader? Keep on picking picking out unnecessary fights. Keep on living in a paranoid way. Keep on being insecure. People are going to pick that up. People are going to understand that that, that you are, frankly, losing your place as a leader. And when you do that, 
it builds insecurity. It builds insecurity for the people that follow you. It builds insecurity for the people that, that, that want to be loyal to you. And also shows an, an opportunity for people that frankly have ill intent. How to succeed. How to overcome that failure. Well, James 3.18 says to us, Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Sometimes we forget that God's calling on all of our lives are to be peacemakers. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that just aren't worth fighting over. And so often, when you choose and pick fights, you're revealing a lot more about your insecurity and your weakness than what you're saying about your strength or who your confidence is in. Be a people of peace. Whether you're working here in church, serving in church, whether you're a, you're a leader, you have leadership in your family or you have leadership at work, be a peacemaker. And then number four, his relationship with God. Once again, we bring up in verse 12, it says that, that the Spirit of the Lord had, had left Saul and was with David. How'd that happen? I would say, as I mentioned to you earlier, God stayed where he was. Saul drifted. You know, so often we feel like, man, where's God in all this? Well, he's right where he's always been. But we took our eyes off of him. We sacrificed time with him. And slowly but surely, the one that we call our father became a stranger and then became an adversary. Saul actually became an adversary of God, an adversary of God or I should say God became an adversary of Saul. A man that had a deep abiding spiritual relationship with God. He took his eyes off. How to fail as a leader? Drift from God. Forget your first love. Relegate God to the back seat. We usually don't consciously do that. We just kind of let it happen. How to succeed as a leader? Always keep the primary relationship in your life between you and God. And you will keep first things first. This morning, as we close out this message, and, and we, were, we were talking about leadership, but who has the leadership in your life? That's the key to whether or not you're going to be seen a successful leader in the eyes of God, is whether or not he has the leadership and lordship in your life. And God's always at work. God's always shifting, changing, messing with us for the purpose of pulling us deeper into that relationship and that will of God. Has God placed a calling on your life this morning to become a part of this church, to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? This morning, the altar, the time is open. We're inviting you to come forward. It'll be hymn number 53 in his time. Please stand.
be to you a lovely thing in your time. Thank you for coming to worship this morning at Memorial Baptist Church. I encourage you to be a part of Sunday school. That's, that's Bible study, and uh, we're excited to have you here uh, at Memorial. I'll be standing right over here by the piano. If, if there's a decision or something that you'd like to discuss with me, I'll be right over there. Let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you have called us to submit to your authority, to your leadership. For it's only when we follow the leader that we can truly lead in a godly way. The world needs to know that. The world needs to be pointed to the one that they're called to relationship with. Give us those opportunities as we go out in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.